Hi there, welcome to this tutorial on using environment variables inside of Flutter. So we'll be using the flutter.env package for this. And essentially what that allows us to do is have variables such as either an API key, perhaps a URL or a variety of things that change depending on a dev, a staging, a production or any other environment. So here we have essentially just a brand new Flutter project. I created that using Flutter create and we call the project ds.env. Next up, I'm going to install the flutter.env library, and that's done by running flutter pub add, and we'll say flutter underscore dot env. Now, alternatively, you can go over to pubspec.yaml, and if we scroll down, we could add this directly to the dependencies array. So you might want to make sure that your version is 5.0.2 as that's the one we'll be using inside of this tutorial. Next, we'll go ahead and create a .env file. That means we'll come across to the root of the project. We'll right click, hit new file, and we'll say .env. This is where essentially you'd add all of your specific environment variables. For now, we'll say API underscore URL equals, we'll simply say HTTP localhost 3000. This is where essentially we'd add all of the different environment variables that we'd like to inject inside of our Flutter app. But in order for Flutter to see this, we need to go back to pubspec.yaml and scroll down until we see assets. Here, we have to remove the current assets that are there and add .env. We can then save the file and run Flutter pub get. Next, you might want to add the .env file to your git ignore. So head over to your .gitignore and somewhere inside of here, add .env. This will make it so that we don't commit the environment variables to our source control. What you may want to do is add a .env.example file like this. And within this file, define the various variables that you'll use throughout the application. So here I've added API URL, but we won't give it a value That'll just tell us or remind us that we need to add a value for this. This can be submitted to source control, so we don't need to add this to the git ignore. With that said, we can go ahead now and restart the application on the emulator and then navigate to main.dart. Within here, we can say .env.load. We'll need to import that from flutter.env. And as this is a future, we're going to make this async and we'll say future void instead. And we will await on that .env.load. Now, if we had another file that instead we wanted to load and it wasn't called .env, we can pass the file name parameter here and we could provide a different name. By default, it's .env, so we don't have to pass anything in. But as you can see, if you did want to change that, you could. I'm going to go ahead and remove that just for now. So this now means that the application will have all of the variables that we specified inside of .env will be loaded inside of the app and it will be able to be accessed. So let's head over to the home page, which is simply just a scaffold with an app bar. And inside of the body, for now we'll just do a centered text. And the text itself will have a .env.env. And this will give us essentially the map back of environment variables. And the thing that we want from here is the API underscore URL. This will have to be imported again. So we'll import flutter.env. And you'll see that this is a potential string. It's a nullable. So it says here that the argument type string question mark, essentially saying that this might not exist, can't be assigned to the parameter type of string. So here we can provide a fallback, and for now we'll just say API URL not found. I'm going to save that, and we get a not initialized error. And that's because the application was already running at this point, but if we just step through the debugger and we restart, we should be able to see that we have that localhost 3000. That's exactly what's inside of our .env file, and if we added any more environment variables, we'll be able to access them in the same way. So there's another way to access the different variables, and that's by using 
dot get. So get has the string name. So we'll say API URL. And this won't complain anymore now about potentially being a nullable value. But we do also have the option to provide a fallback. So we can say a named parameter here called fallback. And then we'll just say API URL not found. And if we save this, we should get the exact same response. So let's reload the app. And we can't visibly see any difference because, of course, we're getting that same URL. So this works well, especially if you're looking for a single environment. But oftentimes, you might be looking to make a very specific dev environment. And that means you have different API URLs or different API keys that are separate from a production environment. So let's go ahead and create a .env dot production and the same for a dot env dot development file what we can then do is head over to pubspec.yaml because anytime we add a new asset like this we need to tell flutter about it so we can then add a dot env dot production and a dot env dot development to the assets array we will have to then restart the application so if we go ahead now to main.dar and I'm going to click run and debug once again, we will at least have at the very start no differences. But if we then inside of the .env.development, if we add an API URL where that equals to localhost 3000 once again, but for production, we'll copy that over to instead be a different URL. So maybe we'll say developer.school. Then inside of main.dart, we can say if we are in the k release mode this is essentially just a constant and that constant tells us whether we are in the released version of flutter or whether we're on the development environment if we are in release mode we'll use dot env dot load and we'll pass in that file name like before but this time we want to load the dot env dot production and subsequently we can move this one up and instead we'll load the file name of .env .development. So this will now load the appropriate file depending on whether we are in release or any other mode. Don't forget you can also specifically, instead of saying else here, you could check to see whether we are in k-debug mode. And then we could load the development environment specifically. So this will now, inside of the debug version, of our application load the development variables but in production it should load the production ones next up we're going to create an environment class so let's go overhead to our library and inside of here we'll make it models folder and inside of models we'll make an environment dot dot and then inside of this file we can say class environment and we can use this to define some accessor methods. So we'll make this static string get. We'll call this one file name. And we can take the logic outside of main.dart. And we can just copy that in. So within the file name, we'll simply return env.production in release mode. We'll need to import that once again from foundation. Otherwise, we'll return the development file. Next we can define our API URL. So we'll say static string get API URL. Let's remove what copilot just give us there. Instead we'll say dot env dot env. Make sure you import the dot env. And here we'll say API underscore URL. We can elect to provide a fallback. So we'll say API URL not found. And then what this means is that we can go back to main.dart now and instead of loading the different files based on the if statements, we can simply load the file name of environment dot file name. You could also elect to not make these static and instead make an instance of environment. But for now, this will be good enough for us and we can head back to home.dart and instead of accessing it like this, using .env.get, we can now say environment dot 
API URL. This allows us to put the fallback inside of one place inside of the application, and at the same time, gives us typed access so we don't make perhaps a spelling mistake when we're trying to access a specific variable. One thing to remember with this though is that anytime you add a new environment variable to your file, you'll need to go ahead and update that inside of the environment class. So that's how you use environment variables inside of your Flutter applications. One final thing to do before we wrap up is go to our git ignore and add a dot env dot production and a dot env dot development. That'll stop the environment variables from being added to source control once again for our different environments. So in this tutorial, you learned how to add environment variables into your Flutter applications. You went ahead and created a specific development and production set of values, and you created a class to easily access those variables. I'd love to hear what you think of this. Of course, let me know inside of the comments what you'd like to see next. And don't forget to check out developer.school for the written version of this article.